There appears to be a tragic disconnect between ideology and reality when it comes to traditional architecture and traditional urbanism in North America. Now, why is that? Well, when it comes to left-right political debates, it often seems that the right-wingers are the ones who support the preservation of traditional architecture, while the leftists are the ones who support uh, modernism, essentially. They support destroying traditional architecture and building modernist buildings in its place, or destroying historic statues, or in some cases, quote-unquote, modifying historical buildings with modernist additions, which really means ruining them. And we saw this, for instance, in the reactions to the Notre Dame fire, where it was largely leftists who were saying, don't rebuild the church, the parts that were destroyed, or rebuild them in a modernist style, whereas it was right-wingers saying, no, rebuild it exactly the way it was before. And it was leftists also saying, oh, it's a waste of money to rebuild the church when you could be using this money to spend on poor people instead, or on immigrants, or whatever. Now, this is the interesting thing. That's the political debate going on. But what is the reality in terms of who actually wants to live around traditional architecture? This is the interesting thing. The reality of who wants to live around traditional architecture or in traditional buildings and neighborhoods seems to be the exact opposite of the political debate in terms of who supports it. At least this is true in North America. In Europe, I don't think the same dichotomy necessarily exists. I think in Europe, a lot of people live in traditional neighborhoods across the entire political spectrum. In fact, in some cases, the majority of the population do. Like I'd imagine in Italy, Spain, and Portugal, the majority of people may live in what I would consider you know, traditional pre-World War II neighborhoods. However, in the United States and Canada, a very interesting phenomenon exists where in traditional neighborhoods, it's actually overwhelmingly liberals who live in these neighborhoods, even though conservatives are the ones who, in theory, stand up for traditional architecture more. Now, you might say that's because traditional architecture is disproportionately concentrated in major cities in North America. Cities like Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., New Orleans, New York City, Montreal, Quebec City, San Francisco, Toronto, Chicago, Charleston, Savannah, etc., Ottawa, you know, city, cities like that. There is some truth to that. However, when you look at smaller towns where traditional urbanism and traditional architecture exists, you actually do see the same pattern. And I'm going to link to a website that proves this. There are a number of cities, uh, sorry, of towns and villages in the United States, especially Canada actually doesn't have so many towns like this, but the United States has a good number of historic towns that aren't, you know, bigger cities, but are instead smaller towns that have a lot of well-preserved historic architecture in traditional styles. Uh, medium density, often where you have row houses or buildings that are very, you know, homes that are very close together that are either, you know, attached like townhomes or detached but very close together. So definitely denser than your standard suburb. But at the same time, these are small towns or villages. These aren't big cities. Now, I've looked at this website, and sure enough, all these towns have, without, I believe without exception, uh, their voting base is more democratic than the average for the county that they're in. And often for the state that they're in. But I think the county level is often more of an accurate comparison. So that means that these towns tend to have a more liberal population than the surrounding county. And it's not just because the rest of the county is more rural. If anything, sometimes the rest of the county is more urban or these towns are consistent with the average 
uh, size of communities within these counties that most people live in, or smaller even. So it can't simply be that these towns are more urban than the average for these counties. So for whatever reason, liberals seem to be drawn to traditional communities, despite theoretically opposing them. I honestly don't know why. It's a very bizarre phenomenon. If I had to guess, I would say it's because conservatives have bought so thoroughly into the suburban American dream that even though in theory they support traditional architecture, in practice, they don't want to live anywhere but suburbia. They think that like you're a pussy or you're not a man if you live in a home that's not a large detached home with a large yard. They think it's unmasculine, it's effeminate, it's socialist, it's whatever. So there's this real double think going on with conservatives in this regard because they theoretically support traditional architecture, but they don't want to live around it. And again, okay, so what are the examples? Which communities am I talking about? Well, the the towns that I looked up specifically include... Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Newport, Rhode Island, Nantucket, Massachusetts, Newcastle, Delaware, Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, Frederick, Maryland, Galena, Illinois, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Annapolis, Maryland, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, Provincetown, Massachusetts, St. Augustine, Florida, and probably a few others that I can't remember right now, but those off the top of my head were the towns that I looked up. And all of these are basically towns, smaller towns with a lot of traditional architecture. Some of these are also tourist draws, but not all of them have a ton of tourists. I've actually been to many of these towns myself. And sure enough, there is often visual evidence of there being a disproportionate number of liberals. You see more pride flags, more BLM stuff, stuff like that. And frankly, even within the cities, I find in neighborhoods with traditional architecture, I see more pride flags and more BLM stuff and, you know, decolonize whatever, like various like leftist posters or decorations that people put up around their homes or around their neighborhoods to signal that they're leftists or liberals. I see more of that shit in neighborhoods with traditional architecture than in neighborhoods without traditional architecture. Like I would say within Toronto, that would definitely be the case. The more traditional architecture there is in a neighborhood, the more of that shit that I see. So I don't know what the fuck is the problem. Like, what is the source of this disconnect? I honestly don't know. It's a huge problem, though, because do we want the residents of our most traditional neighborhoods to be the people who are ideologically opposed to the existence of this kind of architecture? I don't know. Like, it could be that there's a huge disconnect where it's like liberals claim to be against this type of architecture, but in practice, they want to live around it, while conservatives, in theory, claim to be in support of this kind of architecture, but in practice, they don't want to live around it. I don't know. It's it's really weird. Um, if anyone has any better explanations than me, I'd love to hear them, but this is a very bizarre trend. It's a trend that I don't think gets enough attention, to be honest. I haven't heard too many other people talking about it. But it's it's a really bizarre trend, and it seems to be specifically a North American trend. I don't think it's so much a thing in Europe. The only other place where I could see it being a thing is maybe other New World countries, like maybe Australia or New Zealand or, I don't know, certain parts of Latin America or even South Africa, maybe I could see it being the case, but I don't think it's the case in Europe. Um, It seems to be more of a North American thing. So I don't know, sound off in the comments. What do you think about this? And I'll, I'll provide the link to that website I was looking at. You can input the names of these cities in the website and you'll find the, the, the data on voting records in these towns and sure enough it can compare and it compares it to the county average and and the state average and it completely corroborates exactly what i'm saying so i don't know check it out for yourself anyway that's uh that's all i got for now